Today, we're going to take a look at the three basic parts that make up the runner's body. How's it going, runners? My name is Justin Thompson. I'm your average running PT, and I help the average runner achieve their own personal elite status. If that's something you guys are into, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you know when the next video comes out. So the information I'm giving you today is not straight from my head. Obviously, these are things that, you know, I've learned over time, but the way that it's presented here, the way that I'm going to present it to you does not come straight from me. It actually comes from Jay DeSherry's book, Running Rewired. So if you guys are interested in this book, I'm going to put a link down in the description below so that you guys know where you can get this book. This is one of my favorite books and one of the best books that you can buy that can help you learn how to rewire your running so that you can be more uh, effective, efficient, and just a better overall runner. Okay, so this is it. This is the runner's body. And this is a really simplified version, but I want to show you guys what all of this actually means. So in Jay DeSherry's book, Running Rewired, he talks about three basic parts. Now, obviously, there are a lot of other things that go into running and being effective as a runner. This talks about just the basic parts of locomotion, movement. So that's what we're going to go over here today is just these three basic parts of the runner's body. And what we're going to start with first is what makes up the structure of the body. So the first thing we need to think about is the actual skeletal system and the bones that make up the entire body and the joints that make up the entire body. So right here, I'm actually going to put in here the skeleton. So your your skeletal system, as well as I'm going to put in here joints because the joints are what allow for the skeleton and, and everything to move. Okay, so you can't just have a bunch of bones that are all fused together. You're not going to be able to move very well at all. So we include the joints in here as well. Now, what we need to do though is we need to create some way for these joints and, and the bones and the structure to actually be able to move. So what are the things that actually create movement in the skeletal system? Well, you can probably guess that that's going to be the muscular system. Okay, so muscles that hold everything, uh, that create the movement. Now the joints and the skeleton are actually held together by ligaments and there's cartilage and things like that within that, but those are all passive structures. The only thing that's going to create movement is actually to have some sort of contractile tissue, such as muscle, that's going to create movement around those joints. Okay. Now the arrows here are indicating some things that I want to talk about here in a second. But in order for those muscles to actually contract, we have to be able to send those muscles a signal that creates that contraction. So the third part of the runner's body is actually the brain. Okay, so the brain and not just the brain, but the nervous system uh, as in its entirety, okay? All right, so the brain or the nervous system, okay? Now, what do these arrows actually mean? So let's start back here at skeleton, the joints, the bones, the, the structure of the body. Now, in order to create movement around that structure, you have to send a sig you have to get the muscles to act on the skeletal system. So that's what this arrow right here is, okay? So it's creating movement by going in this direction. Now, the skeleton and the joints has uh, receptors inside of it that's actually sending signals back to the muscles and back to the brain as well. So that's what these arrows are here, that it's sending signals back to these other structures. So some of the signals that are being sent are the joints are sending signals to the muscles saying, hey, we're getting to the end of our range of motion, you better contract or I'm going to end up getting injured. So I'm going to go too far, all right? And then it's also sending that same kind of a message back to the brain. 
Am I being overstretched in the joint? Am I going through too large of a range of motion? And then the brain will then send signals to the muscles as well. So this is what this arrow is right here. So the brain is what's sending signals by way of the nervous system to the muscular system, okay? So whenever we're getting these signals here, you're also going to be sending signals back to the brain from the muscles. So say you are overextending yourself and you are getting a too big of a stretch. You're going to end up sending a pain signal back to, or let's not say a pain signal. You're going to send a nociceptive signal. Okay. So that there's, there's a distinction there. A nociceptive signal back to the brain. The brain will then interpret it as potential pain or too much of a stretch and then it will cause the muscle to contract in order to protect itself and not go through too big of a range of motion which is again also protecting the joints as well so then in the runner's body all these signals need to be working well together and communicating well with each other all these different parts need to be communicating well with each other in order for the system to work as efficiently as possible. So let's say we have a, a, a sprained ankle, okay? So if you sprain your ankle, then suddenly the receptors inside of the joint have an altered sensation. And they may not be sending the proper signals back to the brain in order to, in order to create the correct muscle contraction in order to protect the joint. So then you might be a little bit more prone to another ankle sprain. That's why a lot of people have more ankle sprains after they have an initial one is because they haven't recreated those proper signals again through whether it's rehab or some other type of training. Okay, same thing with ACL injuries. That's why you see so many who end up with a second ACL injury even though it was just as strong if not stronger than the first ACL because they just haven't recreated those signals that are communicating between all three of these parts of the system. So then if you're getting good input from each part of the system, you're going to get better output all over. So if you get better input from the skeleton and from the joints, you're going to get better output from the brain to the muscles. And therefore, if you get better input to the muscles, you're going to get better output from the muscles. So it all works well together. So all of these things need to be working and communicating well with each other in order to get the, the body working as efficiently as possible. So let me know if that's helpful for you guys. Um, I, I plan on going deeper into this in future videos, but I just wanted to give a little bit of an overview as to what's actually going on in the entire system of the runner's body and the communication that has to happen between joints and nervous system and the, the muscles in order to work properly. Okay, so I plan on going deeper into this because there's a lot of other stuff that we could talk about here. Obviously, if you're getting good input from the brain to the muscles, but if you don't have the proper nutrition for the muscles to contract right, then you got a whole different issue. Right? So there's a lot of other little nuances that go into this, but I just wanted to give the background and give a little bit of information about what are those parts that are going into making the system run. Okay, so hope that was helpful for you guys. Leave a comment down below if it was. If it wasn't, leave a comment anyway and tell me what you thought about it or what I could have done differently. So head on out there, seek your elite. God bless and I'll see you next time.